All right. Well, happy Sunday, September 13th, uh, 2020. Uh, today, our Sunday reflection is going to be on the righteousness of believers, and we're going to be uh, in uh, Matthew and Corinthians today. So we're going to go ahead and review those, uh, those sections as we go through, because uh, as it states here, to get the most of our devotions, we want to set aside time to read the scripture reference throughout. And again, uh, you know, we you really want to study it, not just not just read through it. But we're, so we're going to pick out a few verses uh, as we as we go through here. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus made a statement his listeners probably found shocking. He said that they wouldn't enter the kingdom of heaven unless their righteousness surpassed that of the scribes and the Pharisees. In Matthew five twenty, it says, "For I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven." Uh, now, the Pharisees, you know, were considered the definition of righteous back in the day. They were the religious elite uh, who often elevated their own self worth and standing in the community. Frankly, the righteousness they projected would have seen uh, seemed very tough to surpass. So they. Uh, yeah, they, they purposely set it up there so that other people uh, you know, couldn't, couldn't make it to their plateau. <laughs> but thankfully, Jesus wasn't saying to beat them at their own game. He was pointing to a different standard altogether. Godliness isn't attained by pursuing perfection, dressing a certain way, or by holding positions of influence in society. Rather, we become righteous by making oneness with God. The focus of our life and substance of our daily life and boasting only in him. And we're going to hop into Corinthians here real quick. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 1 verses 18 to 31 and kind of expand on this a little bit. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the cleverness of the clever I will set aside. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God. God was well pleased though, uh, through of the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For indeed, Jews ask for signs and Greeks search for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to Jews, a stumbling block and to the Gentiles foolishness. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, and not many noble. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. And the base things of the world and a despised God has chosen the things that are not so that he may nullify the things that are. So that no man may boast before God, but by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So that just as it has written, let him boast, boast in the Lord. Let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. All right, well, let's go back to 18 real quick. Uh, uh, we, we start off here where it said the word of cross of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. Well, the people uh, which try to know God on their own, apart from what he has revealed through his word or who attempt to become acceptable to him on their own terms, will only find sorrow and destruction. And we can reference that in Proverbs 16 through 25. But every religion in the world except Christianity has rituals through which its members endeavor to earn salvation. They are all based on effort and appeal to human reason and cultural expectations. However, they are all unacceptable and invalid because they glorify people 
rather than the Lord. And we can reference those in Ephesians 2, 8, uh, verse 9, and Titus uh, 3, 5. And let's move down to verse 23, where it says, We preach Christ crucified to Jews a stumbling block and to the Gentiles foolishness. To Jews, Christ was a stumbling block because they were expecting a conquering king who would restore Israel, not a savior who would forgive their sins. They, would, uh, they could not accept that he was the fulfillment of the law and that they only needed to have faith in him to be saved. The Greeks thought that a man who had died as a lowly criminal could not possibly be God incarnate and the savior of the world. Jesus bore no resemblance to their pantheon of mythological deities. So to believe in him seemed foolish to them. And as we go on through uh, uh, verse 27 here, it says, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. The Lord loves to use weak, despised, and seemingly inconsequential things, people, and events to demonstrate his majesty so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. So that, that, digging a little bit deeper into those scriptures, and you kind of see uh, where, where God's perspective is coming from here. So some things to think about this week are, as we pursue godliness, people may respond to us with persecution and hate or interest in, conversa I mean, in conversion. So how can you prepare to respond in either situation? So uh, you need to study the word and, and be prepared for either both sides of those. One side, again, is persecution or hate. And then the other side is interest in conversion. And, and you really have to be prepared for both because if you're just uh, preparing for uh, you know, a battle uh, and you have someone that's is actually interested in, in, in wants to be converted, uh, throw you off your, off your game, right? So you want to go out with love in all these conversations that you, that you have. And Jesus challenged the Pharisees because their motives were wrong. Uh, I mean, they, 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 they just wanted to be haughty and be above everybody else. But what motivates you to be righteous? So you got to think deep. And that gets back into core values. You know, what, are, what are your true core values and what motivates you uh, to be righteous? And, and really, what is the definition of righteous to you? Right. So those, those some good things to ponder uh, today and, 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 and through this week. So put that in your journal and just kind of think about those things. Uh, and uh, it'll just it'll give you something else to, to, to write about this week in your journal. But OK, we are in uh, Daniel chapters three and four. I hope you enjoyed uh, Daniel yesterday. Uh, I really I really enjoy uh, reading Daniel and, and you'll get through uh, some more more good stories uh, uh, tonight, but get through that and get your Bible in one year roll. And if you're not doing it, as always, go ahead and get started tonight. It doesn't matter where you start. Uh, the point is that you're getting started. So hop in there tonight, grab you a couple of chapters and, uh, and just keep rolling with it in a year. Uh, you'll be through the entire Bible. Uh, so that'd be pretty cool. Pretty cool goal for the year for you. All right. Well, there, that's it for the righteousness of believers. Uh, have a great uh, Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon. Get out there with the family, kids. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out in the back 40 here today. I got a new tool I'm going to try. <laughs> so I'm going to get out there and play in the yard and have, have some fun. But you guys uh, have a wonderful day, and we will, as always, talk to you tomorrow. Have a great one.